Hello, uh, my name is Luca. I'm one of the creators of the short film Slice of Life and as I'm sure you know because that's why you're here, uh, the whole film was made with miniatures and not with CGI. This is going to be an in-depth uh, tutorial on how we created the miniatures, how we filmed them and how we composited them in post. So I hope you're going to find it entertaining. Uh, let's get to it! So building, buildings are basically boxes in a way, so uh, you, can, you can build them from anything basically. The, the material we used the most was this 3mm um, plastic, it's an ABS plastic or Sintra or something like that, I'm sure you have something similar in, in your country. You can also use just plain cardboard or whatever, right? But today I'm gonna use uh, just a simple box and it looks like it's a good starting point for my building. Uh, on top of it I found some packaging materials. And it's, a, and it's a pretty interesting shape. I like to look, you know, from, from all the sides, see if there's something interesting here. I don't even know what this is, but it looks useful. So when I was creating the buildings, I was collecting all kinds of junk because it proved very useful. Here I have a box and we can just, just dig through it and see what, what we can use on the building. Uh, there's all kinds of, you know, old telephones and stuff, old VHS tapes. Probably not. Yeah, this is an old cooler from the computer. Probably it's too big, the scale is too big, but who cares. I might as well just glue the whole telephone on top of the building, because why not? What I, what I like to do is put some different levels on top of it, right? So if I, if I glue this like, like a platform here, I would like something here, you know, it's a level up. Then I can put something on that, you know, it starts looking interesting. The fastest way to glue stuff is just by glue gun because it's you know it it sets very fast and you can you can work very quickly. Most of the time I didn't actually know what building I'm gonna make, so I'm just, I was just like you know looking at stuff and the shapes would inspire the look of the building. You know, for one building I would use I don't know like a keyboard from the computer, for another one I would dismantle the printer and just use parts of the printer. I mean, there's all kinds of ready-made uh, interesting shapes in these electronic devices which is perfect for sci-fi. From this side, it's already starting to look interesting because this is like pointing out of the building. So let's see, maybe I can build another level here. So as you can see, I already made one line because the plastic is very soft. So you can just put the ruler and just go across and there you go. Because in sci-fi movies, everything's made from these sheets of metal. Oh, you can also just push in the corners a little bit. And there you go, huh? So I roughly finished the whole building. And now we're gonna put it aside because now is the time for detailing. So one of the most useful things is this circuit board that you can find in almost any television set. Older ones are better, not the new ones, of course. You, you can find all kinds of tiny capacitors and other stuff that I don't know anything about, but they're uh, pretty nice looking and they look like small barrels or small tanks. What's the name of this? Uh, clothes. Clo uh. Clothes pin? pin or a clothes peg. You can use the clothes peg. You can get two really nice looking parts that can be used for some detail on the building. Party popper, it's used for parties, but uh, it also looks like a, some kind of a tank. That's all cool looking stuff that you can basically get for free. Another thing that's also useful, but it's not for free, is the tank model kits. You basically just use the parts to put it on your model. For example, let's just take these parts. This can look like some hatch on the rooftop or something like that. You can take this part and use it as a pipe. And lastly, we bought a 3D printer. The, I, know, I know most of you probably don't have a 3D printer, but they are very cheap. You can buy the cheapest one from China for like a hundred bucks and you can start printing your own parts. We've made tons of these tiny air conditioning uh, devices and you know fans and it's uh, actually really affordable, it's not a big deal. They are good for breaking like the vertical surfaces, the facades, and there you go. It's like a small AC and it gives scale to the building. Okay, so now we have a fan. So we can now put the, I don't know, some kind of a pipe that leads from the fan. 
I 3D printed some of these tiny fences so I can glue them as well. They can be like here. It's always good to have some kind of a logic when you build these things, right? The pipes leading from the fan to some other tank, you know, just like it, it, it kind of has to make sense. That's always good. So I basically detailed it and you can see I put some wires as well that hang. That's, all, that's also a nice visual element. Now for the final touch, I'm going to use an old speaker. So I think it looks kind of like a landing pad. So that's why I, I like it. Oh, there's one tip that I wanted to tell you. Super glue is setting pretty fast but often it's not fast enough. So you can use baking powder or any kind of powder. Sprinkle some powder on the part that you glued and instantly it hardens. That's like the tip that saved my life so many times. I, I love it. One type of lighting that we often did is to put a light bulb inside of the building and just poke a lot of holes on the front and you know instantly you get windows that way. Another technique is this, you know, it's like a just small string of lights from eBay and it's pow powered by the battery. And I just, you know, glue it around the building. So basically now the building is done and now comes the best part and that's painting. So first I'm gonna spray it with the gray primer. This is not really necessary, but I'm just gonna use a little bit of a black spray to uh, spray into the corners, you know, to make them darker a little bit. So now the building is a little bit too dark, so I'm gonna use a white spray to lightly mist over it to you know make it like a lighter grey color. I'm only doing it from the from the top, right? Okay. The painting always gives a huge transformation to the building and it looks pretty cool right now. So now the last step is weathering. So first we're gonna use the wash. I didn't use the wash that much because it, it gets lost in the darkness of the shots. But basically the principle is that you take a little bit on your brush, you know, it looks like oil leaks and some kind of a dirt. And if it's too much, we can just wipe it. And it kind of gives a, a little bit of shading. That's basically the idea of washing. You can buy professional uh, paints like this uh, in stores, but you can also make your own you know, diluted paint. The technique that I use most often is just using some kind of a paint, any kind of paint, uh, but you know, rust colored. And you take a sponge that you wash the dishes with. So you put a little paint on the sponge, not too much. And then when you touch corners on your model, it leaves this kind of a rusty, uh, rusty look. That's a really nice and fast technique for rusting stuff. Lastly, there's a technique that I basically invented myself because I was just too lazy to do any of other techniques. When you're grinding metal, you get these tiny chips of metal, right? The, let's say, metal sawdust. And I collected it and I just sprinkle it over the building and it lands on all the horizontal surfaces. And these small chips of metal uh, will also give some texture to the surfaces, so it's kind of cool. Now I would spray the surface with water or vinegar and uh, it would rust. So basically you get real rust on a plastic building, right? And you can, you can see it on some other buildings how that looks. Because I sprayed the whole building grey, I sprayed over the miniature lights. So I just take an X-Acto knife and I just chip the paint off the lights, right? And it's shining again. Uh, all, all the lights are white now, but I can just take a little bit of red paint paint over it and there you go, red light. I, I forgot about this. I printed out some signs just on the normal paper. I can cut some of them. So now we're gonna glue them to the building because that way we can give some more diversity to the building, some more color as well. Cool. And yeah, with that basically the miniature is done and we can go film a shot. Now we're gonna film a shot and we're gonna film it in passes. Filming in passes means you film the same shot in different light conditions and you composite them together in post-production. So that way you have much more control during filming and over the final look of your shot. 
So the first thing we, we always do is we set up a camera. We, we have it on a slider right now. And uh, we'll have just a simple motion just like sliding forward. And we hook the camera with the monitor because now we can see how the shot looks and we can arrange the buildings. So we filmed the whole film with the Blackmagic cameras. And this is the 4K production camera, but all the shots of the miniatures were filmed with the Ursa Mini 4.6K. And we have a slider. Uh, you're probably gonna have a different slider than us, or you're gonna film your shot statically. It doesn't matter, but basically we're just gonna repeat the same movement all over again with the help of a motion control slider. Let's begin. I designed the shot just by looking at the monitor and rearranging the buildings until I get a nice composition. During this process it's, it's of course good to run, run the camera path and to see how the shot changes over the course of the camera movement. Uh, also I turned on the practical lights on the buildings so I would get the feel of how the lit windows would look and then, and then I kind of tweak the buildings if they cover each other. So I wasn't really satisfied with the shot because uh, the foreground was kind of empty. So I put this platform here. It's always good to have something in the foreground, you know, don't leave it empty. You can see that I left a space behind because I have to, I have to be able to walk around, you know, because we want to shoot the lights from the back a lot of the times. And I connected all of the buildings to the same power source, so when I flip the switch, the buildings are gonna light up for the pass of the miniature lights. We've set up the whole shot, and the first pass that we're gonna do is the info shot. It's the shot with all the lights on. And it will give us the information for, I don't know, tracking or some stuff that we need to do later on. So, okay, info pass. The next pass we'll do is called beauty pass, at least that's what we call it. Um, basically, we turned all the lights in the room off and we just shown some, uh, a couple of lights from the back to give a nice edge on the building. So you don't want anything on the front, it's supposed to be in darkness, but you only want a nice highlight on the edges or on the top of the buildings. The lights we use throughout the miniature filming uh, are 150 watt data lights. They're very nice, uh, this is not a paid commercial of course, but uh, they're very nice small lights, you can be very precise with them, you can point them in certain directions and uh, you know they're perfect for miniature stuff just in case anybody was wondering. Okay, let's shoot it. The most important thing when shooting miniatures is the fog. So all of these buildings are pretty close together. And now we're gonna pump some smoke in the room and it's gonna give separation to the buildings. So the building that's in the back is gonna seem like it's very far away because it's gonna start disappearing in the smoke. That's why it's, it's, it's a very important element. You don't want the smoke to move around because it doesn't look realistic. So you gotta wait a little bit until it settles, you know, until it calms down. You can see we only use the lights from the back. There's three lights right now. We are gonna go very low with the lights and they are hidden behind the buildings and they are giving us nice rays of light from behind. Often somebody would also be here with the light and just, you know, do this with the fingers. He would kind of animate the, the lights a little bit, right? So now we're gonna film the fog pass. The next pass is the searchlight pass. So we uh, we would close the flaps on, on, the, on the light, right? And we would get like a very concentrated long ray of light, like a searchlight. And then you would have to hide behind the buildings and just, you know, wave around and produce a searchlight. Okay, let's do it. The next pass would be the building lights. So uh, we turn everything off in the room and just turn on the buildings. So as I said, they are connected to one power source. And if I flip the switch, okay, most of them turn on. And for the others, they have their battery operated lights and hopefully some of them are still working. 
This is the one we built today, so let's turn that one on. Ah. This pass was always the most scary part of filming because we had to actually touch every building and turn it on. And we had to be really careful not to accidentally move anything because that could easily ruin the shot. We would also use these 3 volt batteries. So basically you can connect individual LEDs to the battery and you can just put them on a building wherever you want. So this platform is kind of empty that it has no lights so I'm just putting like LEDs and it's immediately more interesting. <clears throat> of course one of the most important things when filming miniatures is that you want to keep everything as sharp as it can be, right? So you want to have sharpness, enough sharpness in the foreground as much as in the background. So the more you close the aperture on your camera, you get more sharpness, but you lose light. So it's always a constant balance, you know, with these things and there's no recipe. We kind of winged it from pass to pass. We, li we literally changed the aperture between passes. For example, on the fog pass, the lights were pretty strong and we could close the aperture and get more sharpness. But the miniature building lights are pretty weak compared to our 150 watt lights. And for that pass we had to open the aperture, so it would get kind of blurry. But when you connect all the layers together, it was fine. I realized I want another fog pass, because I only had lights from behind. And I want to put some lights behind these buildings. Now, of course it's too crowded right now and I can't get my lights inside, so what do I do? I will just remove this back row of buildings because I don't need them anymore. I filmed everything I needed with them. Of course it's risky because you can't go back from this point, but I'm pretty sure I have everything and I'm gonna remove them and just put the lights behind the, these buildings in the front. So now I have much more space and I can just, you know, place the lights like this on something. So for this final fog shot, I'm gonna I'm gonna use some rain as well. Uh, we we sprayed rain on every shot basically, but now it's only me today, so I can't do everything. I think this is something for spraying pesticides on your garden or something. But you pump it up, you know, and then it sprays a fine mist of rain. Here in Axia. The last pass we're gonna do is called the Alpha Pass and we just put a green screen behind the front row of the buildings and we evenly lit it with two lights. We're gonna use it to separate front buildings uh, from the ones in the back and that way we can put some traffic in the middle or something like that. When we were filming uh, the shots for the film sometimes we used the, only the white sheet and we did a high contrast black and white matte but green screen works as well. That concludes the filming part. I think we have, I hope we have all the all the passes and now we can go uh, to the compositing phase. So, okay everybody, uh, we are now on the last part of this uh, video, tutorial, whatever it is. And now we're going to composite all the shots that we filmed. So the first thing I'm using, by the way, I'm using After Effects. But this is not After Effects tutorial, it's just like a process uh, that I used and probably you'll see some stuff that you can use in whatever software on, on whatever uh, type of shot that you're working on. So the first thing we'll do is just, I have this, this is the uh, passes that we shot. So I'll just import them into After Effects and I'll take the info pass and create a new composition. So this is the HD composition, because today it's gonna be easier for me to work like this, but uh, usually I was compositing 4.6K footage. So I'll call it the final shot. Sorry, sh shit, sh shot, final shot. And I'll create a new folder and type raw, because it's always important to keep things tidy. Now I'm gonna put the um, beauty pass on top of it. First thing we gotta do is sync all the shots together. You see, like, they're, they're actually misaligned. 
So I just do it by moving the shot left or right until they match and now I know that it's synced. So another thing that I'm gonna do is I'll just trim the shot at the beginning. Let's just see, okay, so here it starts with the in point and the out point, trim the footage. So okay, now we have like a nine second shot. Next pass was the fog pass, same thing, screen it. This one is pretty easy as well, you can see up there that it matches pretty well. That's probably good enough. Okay, fog pass number two, that was the pass, that was the one in the foreground. Screen it, let's see, uh -huh. I have this here, which is helpful, yeah, like this. Then we have the searchlight pass. This is not a really interesting process, but you know, it, it has to be done, like you have to sync all the passes before you can do any creative stuff, so you know, what, what, what can you do? This one is a little bit more tricky because you know, there's not that much information, I mean you can, you can sync the windows, like this. And the last one was the matte pass, let's screen it. Okay, so now everything is synced. So now I just want to turn on the beauty pass and let's see how the other passes stack on top. So this is the fog pass, fog number two, searchlights and the miniature lights. So everything works, but the thing is that it's too bright. Why is it too bright? These parts are black, right? But they are not completely black, that's the problem. So if I crank this up, you can see there's a lot of noise uh, and there's a lot of information here that basically we do not want. So I'm gonna leave it in the beauty pass, but in every other pass, I just wanna crush the blacks a little bit. So I'll just put a curves adjustment and then just crush it a little bit until it looks really, really black. I can check it like this. There's still, still some stuff, but you don't, you, you don't wanna crush it too much. So I'm just gonna copy the uh, curves adjustment and paste it on all the other passes. And there you go, immediately it's, it's looking much better now. This is good, this, is, this one is still too bright. So fog pass number two. So I'm gonna crush the middle ones as well. You can also, of course, lower the transparency of the layer. You can do a lot of stuff. And that's what I was telling about having um, a lot of control in the post-production, you know? We have everything in layers and we can do whatever we want with each layer. Another thing that's bothering me is that the whole shot is kinda green. And that's because I didn't bother to change gels on my lights when I was filming. We'll leave the fog pass greenish, but the front fog pass, for example, we can make it a little bit more blue. So I'll just take the blue channel and push it into the blue. So immediately it's like, you see, there's a little bit of difference. Searchlights, for example, I want to make them white so I can tint them. Let's put a tint, you see, so they are white. So that way you can alter the look of the shot uh, after the filming. In the end it's gonna be a cinemascope shot, so I'm gonna just take this cinemascope cover I have and I'm gonna put it on top just to see how it looks, like this. And I'll do a quick adjustment layer, I'll call it CC, color correction. It should probably be a little bit darker in the end, so it's still too green, so I can adjust the fog pass a little bit. Okay, so you can see the shot is looking pretty nice, but it's kind of static, nothing is really happening in the shot. So now we can start adding some other elements. For example, let's start with the advertisement. We created probably over 50, let's see, like, oh, 71 items. So that's 71 different ads we created. That's not bad for a short film. So anyway, for every shot we actually shot a separate projection pass. We really projected stuff on the buildings. I didn't do it because I don't have a projector anymore. All of these were designed in After Effects, but then they were projected on a piece of paper and shot again with the camera because now they have this analog feel. So again, when I put them in a shot, they will kind of have this uh, realistic feel. So let's just import a few of them. Let's say we want to put an ad somewhere in the scene. The thing is, it has to follow the camera movement. That's why we have the info pass. So we are going to track it with the After Effects camera tracker. And it's done. So you see all these tracking markers. Now After Effects will understand the movement the camera made. We can create the camera first. Create a null here. 
I like to create a couple of nulls, like one in the foreground, one in the middle, and one all the way in the background. And just check how does it look in the top view. This is the camera, this is the front one, the middle one, and all the way in the back. This is, this is kind of the world that we have to work in. You can adjust the scale of the world, but I'm not gonna go into that right now. Let's say we want to put it on this building right here. We can just take the null because it's correctly in the space where we want it. I'll copy the, its position and put it on the advertisement layer. So there you go. Now if we browse through it, it will follow the camera move. So now it's all about making it look, look good. Of course we gotta screen it. You can also use the um, corner pin and just try to match the correct perspective. So there you go. It's too bright, of course, so I will turn the opacity down to, let's say, 50%. And there it is. Looking pretty good. So now we can just repeat the same process for a couple other ads. I want to put one over here. So I created a couple of nulls. So let's put a neon sign, for example. Again, copy the position and paste the position. Set it on screen. And there you go, a tiny neon light on the corner of the building. You can also just copy, you know, this layer, duplicate it and just replace it with another ad so you don't have to go through the process of making it uh, transparent, screening it and blah blah blah. And there you go, it's like immediately on this building. The most important thing is to match the perspective because, you know, it will look weird if it's, if it's kind of crooked. Okay, so the shot is immediately more interesting, it has more color to it. Sometimes uh, we weren't satisfied with the amount of lights that we had on the buildings. So we shot some LEDs in a dark room and I could also put them all over the buildings, wherever I want. So let's put, for example, on this corner, put the flare inside, make it a 3D layer, that's important. Copy the position, put it on the flare and set it to screen. Another thing that I can do is animate it so it would blink. I do it just by animating its opacity. So I start with zero. On the first second I want it to jump to 100 and turn off. Jump to 100 and turn off. So let's see. It's like a signal light. So now I alt click on the opacity and just type loop out. This is just a simple expression that loops the whole animation I just did. And now I can just duplicate the flares. I'll do one here and one here. And now we have three flares that blink on this building. Oh, let's put a smoke element. Let's put it here in the foreground. Kind of like there's a chimney here or something, but I'm gonna uh, tint it because everything is kind of greenish, so the smoke should be greenish as well. So I kind of like these billboards that we made but they're not very noticeable because these miniature lights didn't actually put enough of lights on them, right? Let's just take a couple of these points and create a solid. And I'll make it pretty transparent so I can see what I'm doing. I will just draw a spotlight and I will feather the masks a little bit, turn the opacity all the way up. And now I can take the info pass. In the info pass you could see everything, everything was evenly lit. And use this mask that we did as the alpha mask and we get this. So I basically returned some information from the info pass, maybe tint it a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's looking pretty cool. And now the last thing to do, and one of the most important things to do, is to add some traffic to the city, because that's actually what sells it as a living and breathing city. The way I created cars was I used this tiny picture of something, I honestly don't even remember what that is, but I used it for the body of the car. And on top of that I just put the flares that we shot and I used the blue one for the headlights, the red one was on the roof, it was kind of like a signal light, I used the orange one at the back and of course it's important to animate them, which I did uh, the same way as I animated the red blinking lights on the building. And to make it more interesting I put the white light as well and it's always nice to create different rhythms of blinking because then it's more dynamic and it looks more interesting. So now I created a car and I can put it into a scene. Of course I gotta turn it into a 3D layer and now I just gotta keyframe its positions. Kinda draw his path, maybe it's rising a little bit as it's flying, maybe it's like going ascending a little bit and that's the end keyframe and here it is, a happy little flying car. 
but it should be as dark as the building so the layer that I need to correct is this one actually the body of the car and I'll just do a little tint effect and take the black part and just make it I don't know like lighter greenish color like this yeah you see it almost disappeared because I guessed the right color looking good so I just made five different cars like that I just rearranged their lights a little bit differently they're just PNG files I can import them as a PNG sequence so I'll put the car into another comp and I will extend the composition like this so these are the three cars that I've put in that I animated and they blink differently you can see so now I just wanna copy them and I just wanna make one lane of traffic I'll create a new null object and parent all of them to the null and I will animate the null so now they're flying forward but they're all driving at the same speed so now I just wanna individually select every other car you know just like randomly pick them out so now I will animate them to be a little bit slower maybe the point is to create some diversity maybe this guy wanted to go around somebody right and he stepped on it but now the, the other guy, you see this guy, he's like, what the hell, man, you're, you're too close. So he moved a little bit, you know? And it's little stories like that that you can tell in your animations. And, uh, and nobody will ever see them. So <clears throat> there's my traffic. But I want the traffic to be behind this building. And that's why we made the mat pass. Remember the mat pass? Well, that's what it's for. So I can just put it on top of the traffic layer. And let's key it out. Click here. That's that's good enough. So now I want to tell the traffic layer to use the mat pass as its alpha mat. And you see, it disappeared behind the building. So now I can just arrange them to see to look like they're behind these two buildings, right? And I can just copy both of these layers, flip the orientation of the traffic, and put another lane down there. And they're both going into the separate directions they are too, uh, too colorful so I will definitely screen them and then I will turn the opacity down a little bit already looking better and there's maybe too many cars so I can just go back to the traffic and just maybe delete this guy these red ones are probably the most problematic ones I can take this guy we can shift his color a little bit we can make it yellow and immediately it's a little bit different I, I really like these traffic lanes I'm just gonna copy a few more of them and just put them here not bad <clears throat> well the city definitely came alive but you know you can just film all kinds of different elements on the black background we just sprayed some water with this pesticide thing to simulate rain or we filmed the um, a separate searchlight just in the darkness and you can just put them in your shot I will just screen it I will crush the blacks again I can also just like put a quick mask around it I can duplicate it maybe offset the time so now I have two searchlights where's the uh, rain I can put rain layer on top and now because of all these elements my shot is pretty bright again so I just wanna make it a little bit more dark so I guess this is the end of this miniatures featurette and I really hope you learned something because I think there's a lot of cool techniques here that you can use even if you're not making a dystopian dark rainy uh, sci-fi city and I'm just gonna show you how my original composites looked you gotta keep in mind that right now I just spent like I don't know one hour on compositing this shot but when I was doing real composites for for the film I would spend I don't know probably two days on just one shot being very careful that everything was balanced right that tiny cars fly where they are supposed to and you, you can you can see how many elements it takes to create a nice looking shot so I just want to thank you all for watching and I guess I'll see you some other time. Bye!